Dr. Owais Durrani is an emergency medicine physician in Houston, Texas. Welcome to the day, Dr. Durrani. The temperatures are quite brutal where you are. Are emergency units already feeling the heat or more people being brought in due to heat-related conditions? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely been a tough few weeks and a tough summer. It's a common topic of conversation amongst us physicians at each shift change about how many heat-related illnesses we're seeing. Um, we're seeing everything across the spectrum. So, you know, people in their 20s and 30s that may have been outside for an extended period of time showing up with kind of mild symptoms of dehydration where they may be having cramping, they may feel nauseous, really fatigued. But the really kind of concerning thing is we have a lot of uh, folks that have chronic medical conditions who may or who may be elderly who are exposed to these temperatures as well. And that's when you get into those uh, diagnoses of heat exhaustion and heat stroke where you get um, the damage to your organs. So kidney damage, muscle breakdown, and as your piece alluded to heat stroke where you get confused and your brain essentially stops working the way that it needs to. And that's when those patients come in with extremely high temperatures and that is life-threatening. And it's something that we've been seeing since, you know, uh, mid-May and we're continuing to see. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like the temperatures are going to be much cooler um, over the next few weeks or month at least. Is there enough awareness among the public, especially the vulnerable demographic of the dangers of exposure to heat and, and strong sunlight, of course, as well? You know, all in all, I'd say no. There are some communities that do a good job of kind of making people aware of the emergency that is this extreme uh, degree of heat. Um, I like to compare it to like a hurricane, right? If Houston is about to be hit by a Category 5 hurricane, everyone knows it's coming. Everyone's making the preparations that they need to. They may be evacuating or storing up on food, water, that kind of thing. Uh, there is no urgency to that level when it comes to the heat, yet people are still dying and especially those who are vulnerable or at extreme risk. And so I think some cities are doing an okay job of um, providing resources and making sure people know that these resources exist, but some people in uh, communities aren't. And we need to make sure that all communities across the entire country and globally are activating healthcare resources, activating cooling centers, making sure that those, are, those that are at higher risk know of these resources and are being provided with those resources so that we can save lives. Mm. Heat waves seem to last longer and longer. How big of a difference does it make for the body to cope with these extremes for a couple of days or 18 days, like in the case of Phoenix? It makes a huge difference. Um, you know, if you are exposed to one day of heat and then the temperatures cool down overnight, um, your body is able to recover. But if, as you mentioned, if it's going on for weeks, it's harder. And especially if you're homeless or you don't have access to air conditioning, all that fatigue and tension that your body is under builds up to the point where um, a lot of times your body may not, able, not may be able to compensate and you end up in the hospital. Um, especially those that have chronic medical conditions. So you may not be homeless, but you have chronic, you know, diabetes, heart failure, lung issues. And, you know, we all can't stay inside for 24 seven for, you know, three weeks, you have to go outside to work, you know, complete your daily tasks. That kind of adds up, adds up, adds up. And, you know, the first few days you may be okay, but a week or two weeks in, it finally catches up to you. And um, especially if you're in that high risk kind of medical comorbidity category, um, unfortunately, a lot of those folks end up in the hospital. What is your advice to people facing these protracted heat phases then? Yeah, unfortunately, the, the best advice is, you know, stay inside. But as I just mentioned, because these periods are so long, it's hard to tell people to not work. If you have kids, it's hard to tell them, hey, it's summer break. You can't go out to the pool or you can't play outside. So, you know, number one advice, obviously, is to stay out of the heat as much as possible. But knowing that we have to be exposed to it to some degree, I would say focusing on hydration. Whenever you feel thirsty, it's already too late. You, you're already mildly dehydrated. So making sure you are forcing yourself to drink healthy, healthy fluids to stay ahead. Um, if you have the option, if you're outside and working, um, of even five minutes of shade, that makes a huge difference, especially when the heat index is 115 or 120 in places like Houston. Um, making sure that we check on our neighbors. That's another big thing. You know, we may be okay. We may be able to compensate, but that elderly neighbor or that neighbor with numerous comorbid conditions uh, may not be. And so making sure that there is some type of system in place to check on those that are um, at high risk. And then, um, you know, if you feel exhausted, nauseous, vomiting, confused, any symptoms that are not normal for you, uh, seek medical attention because the earlier you seek medical attention in a heat-related illness, the higher the chances of recovery.
That's a wise Jirani joining us from Houston in Texas. Thank you so much. Thank you.